It's Rob! Tony! And I'm Jeff. We're in gaming, and that's you! Hello gamers and welcome back to the end. I'm Rob or Warshack, whatever one you want to call me, and we will be moving from rank 9 to 8 in this video while playing Mech Mage. I think we might change it up next episode. We'll be playing Beast Druid, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that because it's also going to be from rank 7 to 6. Oh, no, no, 8 to 7. Yes, but we'll be playing a deck guide video too, so I might just like put two of them together and that'll be that. So there'll actually be like two videos, but they're the same, but it'll be like called different. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, so we'll figure that out. Anyway, we are playing Mech Mage. Like I stated, the deck list is always on the right hand side for you guys, and we will be keeping Frostbolt against the Druid, like I mentioned in our last video, how uh, Darnassus is always mostly their turn one or two play, uh, unless it's, you know they're running Wild Growth instead, or they're running both, who knows. So, obviously, Mana Worm, and then if he plays Darnassus Aspirant, we can Frostbolt it. So, hopefully, he does play a 2-drop, so he can take advantage of using Frostbolt on turn 2. Because if not, then we have to draw into a 2-drop creature, because uh, we obviously don't want to do nothing on turn 2. And we could coin into the Technician, but that'd be kind of silly, too, because then it doesn't become a 4-4, four, four, and we don't get the spare part. And Archmage in our hand, we definitely look, we're looking for spare parts. So, there's a turn 2 play. Thank you, Inoyotron, for being annoying to him and great for me. And sorry if I seem a little out, uh, out of breath or a little bit sweaty. I was just outside playing with my little cousin. There were a bunch of swell fellas. A bunch of swell fellas. Like, Robbie, stop doing videos. Play with me. I was like, all right, all right, all right, all right. We'll go outside for this once, and I'll play with you. Okay. So, obviously, a uh, technician here to get that spare part. It also becomes a 4-4. Oh, no. So, he played a... It looks like he's playing Spell Power Druid, so I'll give this guy kudos. <laughs> you Not very often do you see a Spell Power Druid at all. So, kudos to this guy. So, we could reverse switch it, make it have 2 um, HP, and then Frostbolt it. But then that does waste. And then we... Yeah, so then we'd have to coin out the snow trucker as well. So we'd be wasting three cards to get rid of one and put one card on board. Or we can just fireball it and keep the 4-4 on board. We keep the uh, spare part and the coin for Archmage. And I think keeping the spare part and Archmage for as long as we can is good. I mean, if it doesn't work out accordingly, then it doesn't. But I don't think we should waste three cards to kind of kill that. So we'll just swing for four. You could have gone, you know, either way with that. Use the spare part, Frostbolt, coin into snow trucker. Or you could have just fireballed it. I don't know. We'll see how it turns out in the end. I think it'll be fine, though. I think wasting for one card, one card is fine. So the Ogre Magi. Into the three damage Living Roots. Into the probably Innervate to the passive. Because he wouldn't just Living Roots it to leave it at four attack. Yeah. That'd be silly of him. Sorry, I'm trying to close a water bottle with one hand here. I, like, opened it with one hand, closed it with one hand. You know, the skills. Alright, so turn 5, how are we going to do it? There's probably Snow Chugger, Frostbolt, Coin to Ping. Unfortunately, I don't see a better play there. I mean, we could coin out the Blast Mage, but I don't like leaving a... We could actually not coin in passive, but just leaving a Spell Power on his board is quite annoying. Because he could definitely could, uh, like a 3 damage Living Roots or, you know, a 2 damage Wraith, draw 1 passive to kill Snow Chugger. So, I think killing it's pretty important. And we still have 1 Spare Part for Arc Mage, so it's not too bad. But Archimage, or coin, or playing Archimage, coining into a spare part would have been two fireballs. Which would have been nice. But Spell Power Druid. Okay. So it looks like we'll be using our spare parts on his 1-4, making it a 4-1, and then we'll Blast Mage. So no spare parts for Archimage, but I think we're in a pretty good situation here. The Druid has run out of cards, unless he's running like Ancient Allure, which I'm not sure if he is or not. So like I said, hopefully Blast Mage hits it at least once. There we go. Thank you, Blast Mage, for doing what you do best. Obviously, with the Druid being frozen as well, he can't use his passive to swing. He can just use it to gain armor, which is nice. And then, depending on what he plays here, we will throw down the Blast Mage and or the Arc Mage. We'll see what, go. We'll see what he plays, see what we can take advantage of. So he's going to swipe the Blast Mage. KK, so... Do we Blast Mage? I think we do. Hopefully, at least two charges hits the... Um, the 1 4. Alright, so it looks like we're gonna play our 1 drop, use our passive, ping it for 1, swing into with our snow chugger. I guess playing Archmage and swinging for 2 to the face would have been a fine play there. Then next turn we double fireball face and then swing with Archmage for gain. If he couldn't kill Archmage, that is. So I guess some, lining up that lethal would have been fine as well. 
So Starfire into the one drop, and it does six damage. So Archmage would have actually died if we wouldn't have killed that, because that would have done six damage, and the guy's attack is one, and Archmage health is seven. So I'm actually happy we killed that, or Archmage would have died. So even though that looked like a better play, and I misplayed it, it worked out to our benefit. So I think playing Piloted Sky Golem here and pinging for one is actually better than playing Archmage. Or we can just play Archmage and fuck it. Just Archmage and call it a day. I think mean, that's our best bet. Hold on one second. What's up? Okay. Okay, so he's going to... Wow, he killed Archmage anyway. <laughs> Spellfire Druid. There you go. Spellfire Druid, even with two cards in hand. Or three cards in hand, I should say. No, no, no. He Starfall to draw one to deal more damage to passive. So yeah, with two cards in hand, he was able to kill Archmage. All right, so Piloted Sky and Noyotron end our turn. I don't think he's going to... I think this is a concede, because if he can't do anything here... Ah, uh, it's game over, and he has no real way, like, once you get rid of the Pilot Sky Golem, you still have to deal with the 4-drop that comes out of it. So you got the Jungle Moonkin, we've got the Fireball in hand, which does 8 damage, and we've got 6 on field, that's an astonishing amount of damage we have. Alright, so, it looks like it's gonna be game here. Alright, so Fireball for 8 to the face, thank you, Sire Moonkin, swing for 6, and that is a win. Hokey dokey, so, moving on to our next game. I wonder who we're going to play. We haven't seen any Secret Paladins yet, or at least... I haven't seen a Secret Paladin in a good amount of time. Normally when you go against a Paladin, it's either... It's like a... I would say a 70% chance it's Secret, and then like a 30% chance it's mid-range. I haven't seen any Murloc uh, Paladins yet, though. I'm waiting for the anything... Anything can happen. I'm looking for the bottle cap that I've seemingly dropped with the one hand I'm using to open up my bottle. Going against Tuna. I like Tuna. I like Salmon a little bit more, though. Sushi's so good. Alright, so I'm probably going to get rid of the Arc Mage, but I like everything else. Like, I guess we get rid of the Blast Mage, but keep the Blast... I don't, I, think, I don't know. There's nothing the Blast Mage can really hit with a Warrior that would be beneficial that the guy's going to play early on. So if you like, you play Alkalite of Pain or uh, Armor Smith, like, the Blast Mage just continuously hitting it isn't good. If he was playing a Hunter or maybe another Mage or a Druid, I would say, sure, keep the Blast Mage. You can definitely kill at least one or two creatures with that. But... Against a, against a warrior, Blast Mage really isn't too effective, unless he's playing Face Warrior, which I know he's not. It's a very unpopular deck. And the reason we played our 2-1 instead of our uh, Mana Worm is because if the 2-1 dies, we get a spare part. If the Mana Worm dies, we get nothing. <laughs> and also, it has three health. So, obviously, we're going to play the Mech Warper into the Noyotron to protect the Mech Warper if... Um, he does happen to have the uh, uh, draw into a fiery war axe, but, uh, but we're still prone to bash. So, and there's the bash. <laughs> bash is such a good card too. Gives you three armor and does three damage. That's insane. So we're gonna throw down the four four. Swing for one. Swing for two. Get another. Uh, we'll get a spare part. We still have another spare part coming from our uh, little 2-1 on the field. So we draw an arc major. That's good as well. We got doom for seven. So we pretty much do not have a five or six drop so hopefully we can draw into something that combos with that so there's another one drop we're gonna throw down the blast mage and then swing with everything hopefully he doesn't have a brawl we're heading into turn five now but you know they always have brawl so they can't really complain but like if it's turn five or six with the warrior they have brawl so let's see here yep there's the brawl <laughs> always have the brawl all right so hopefully our blast mage lives that'd be the best card and our blast mage lives <laughs> And there's the next spare part for the taunt. There's a Lothib for the turn 5 play. Thank you, RNG. Swing for 5, end our turn. So right now, he can't shield slam, he can't bash. He can he can shield maiden. Or he can death spite and kill off our blast mage. But then he's just going to take another 5 to the face. Now, unfortunately, it's turn 6, so there's no Dr. Boom. But we can still make some cool plays here. So we can Mana Worm, uh, ping for 1. I think we taunt up the Mana Worm. So he can't actually kill our Lothop with his weapon. He has to attack in the Mana Worm first, and if he hasn't executed, he has to waste it on the Lothop. And then next turn, we can use Dr. Boom, and the bombs will probably kill him off. Or on turn 8, we can just play Archmage, and hopefully we can get a... Um, no, there's no spare parts on the board besides the one in our hand, so invisibility spare part is highly unlikely. But Arch like on turn 8, if you can Archmage and then make him invisible, and then you've got like two other... Uh, cards in your hand that are spells, it's GG. Archmage is such a great card. If he just lives one turn, you can get so much value out of Archmage. 
In this deck, I would say Archmage and Dr. Boom are both comparable in, like, how good they are. Because normally Dr. Boom is just the best of the 7 drops, but Archmage, that's a crazy 7 drop. So we're going to Boom, of course, swing for 5. Uh, we could have Archmage, but Boom allows us to put these bombs on the board, which definitely put pressure down, because even if he kills, like, say he kills the Archmage without us casting a spell, that's pretty bad. But even if he kills Boom without us attacking with Boom, the Boom bots still have chance to hit face, which is good. And then, obviously, we want to get immediate value out of Archmage, so... Always knowing when to play, which 7-drop is pretty key, too. So he's going to Revenge, and then the bombs are just going to hit face, and hopefully they deal at least 5 damage. A 3 and a 2. Sweet. Exactly 5. Poor guy. If it would have hit, like, a 2 and a 2, I don't see what he, what he would have done anyway, because we're just going to make a Fireball next turn. Ping for 1. If he had no way to kill Lotha either, that would have been bad. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're going to head into another game here. If we win this, we will be rank 8. If we lose this, it's going to take three more games. So it's like, play one game and win, or play three games. Ugh. And we lose one, so it's basically four games. Which is pretty bad, but we'll see. Can't win them all, you know? Alright, so we're going against a Warlock. I can only assume either Reno Lock and or the Aggressive Lock. You don't really see Hand Lock this uh, high up in the ladder. And especially this early in the season, it's a deck that definitely, like, you don't see a lot this high up, like I mentioned. So we got rid of the Unstable Portal, like I mentioned before. If you don't have the Mana Worm to kind of combo it out, it doesn't really work that great. Also, the Cogmaster is a, uh, what was I saying? Cogmaster or Coin into Mech, or Mech Warper, that was the plan there. And I think playing the Cogmaster first, because if he has a Dark Bomb, he'll maybe use it on the Cogmaster instead of our Mech Warper when we summon it. But it doesn't look like that's what's going to happen. Probably should have played Mech Warper. Yeah. Because then the Mech Warper can kill off the 2-2. And then we would have still been able to do shit. Alright, so we can coin into the Snow Chugger. And then also play our 2-1. And then we're going to kill off his 2-2. Um, making that trade probably wasn't the smartest now that I think of it. Because if he would have killed our 2-1, it would have killed it. If he would have killed... Yeah. Well, I guess he could have attacked into our Mech Warper and then Mortal Coiled. And there's a high chance that Mortal Coil would have came out of his um, Dark Peddler. So, it's hard to say. Alright, so we'll, Snow Char we'll Spider Tank swing face with Snow Chugger and swing for two. Uh, if this guy's playing Arena Lock, we have a pretty low chance of winning, to be completely honest. If he has a Shadow... Not Shadow Flame, but if he has a Hellfire, we're also pretty prone to that. Alright, so he's going to swing that, make another Demon... Okay, Demon Wrath, that's pretty bad for us. Kills two of our creatures. Mortal Coil, which we would have been scared of. And they actually made it out of the Dark Peddler, so if we would have done the other play, it would have been just as bad. Uh, Shredder... Are we Blast Mage? I don't think we Blast Mage. I think we Shredder. Because if we Blast Mage and it hits the 2-2 two -two twice, it's just going to make more 1-1s. One -one and then we swing and kill off his 1-1. One -one. Or do we swing phase? I think we kill off his 1-1. One -one. Because unless he has another Mortal Coil on the Spider Tank, it's a pretty good situation. Of course he has another Mortal Coil on the Spider Tank. <laughs> okay, well, I think that's going to be a loss for us. And there's the Dark Bomb on the Shredder. Wow, this guy's had everything to... He's... Oh, man. And it summons a 1-1. One, one. Come on. This is just bad luck, this game, boys. RNG. All right, I think we passive just hit the 2-1. We could have Noyotron, but we need the mech for the Blast Mage combo. So unless he goes easy on us this next turn, I do not see how we're going to win this game. Because even Blast Mage won't clear his field. Hopefully he at least kills these 2-1-1s. One, There's an Emperor. Yeah, he's definitely playing uh, Reno Lock. He's playing 1-ups of everything. He's gotten really lucky with his 1-ups, too. He's got a crazy start game. Double Mortal Coil. That's insane. So we're going to uh, Blast Mage combo, like we said last turn. Kills... Both 1-1s, one which would have been ideal. Uh, good pings by the Blast Mage, but it's just not going to be enough. He can't get through the Anoyotron, which means we can make a favorable trade with this uh, Emperor. But his hand is insane, and he's only at 20 health, and he still has Reno. And there's a heal bot. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. All right, let's see what we draw into. A Shredder. I guess I'll play. I'll, I'll, I'll do another turn here. Kill off the Emperor. If he, if he plays some other crazy bullshit, we, we're, I'm just going to concede. There's no point to waste your guys' time with this game. This is just a bad game for us. It's a hit or miss with a... Yeah. There's no point. There's a 28 health, two cards in hand to his six in hand. Nah. And he's playing Reno Lock. Sorry, guys. 
That is not the game we're going to win. Reno Lock is by far, it is a really strong deck right now too. If it gets any aggro deck, if, as long as you stabilize by turn 6, which the guy pretty much had control of the game most of the time. Uh, he had a really nice start with that Dark Petal into the more, Double Mortal Coil, into the Dark Bomb, into the... Uh, uh, what was it? Imp Implosion, I think he used to summon the... No, 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 he didn't use Imp Implosion. What did he use? He used Double Mortal Coil, Dark Bomb, and there was another card that he got pretty lucky with. Alright, so we're going to keep the Unstable Portal, because we do have that Mana Worm combo, which I had mentioned before is really nice. And we have the Cogmaster. The Cogmaster. So... Well, ideally, we want to draw into a 3-drop sometime before turn 3. And then we can coin out Lothab on turn 4 if we don't get a 4-drop. There's a 4-drop. So, Mana Worm, end our turn. We're going to Unstable Portal next turn, depending on what he plays and what we draw. But Unstable Portal is most likely going to be the play that we make. So, his Mana Worm, if we, the only other... If we don't Unstable, we Frostbolt. <laughs> and we Frostbolt. Oh, man. Swing for 2. If we would have unstable portaled there, we would have attacked his Mana Worm instead of face, because bringing his Mana Worm down to 1 uh, makes it so he has to either make a trade with me this turn and kill off his Mana Worm, or he doesn't play a spell and his Mana Worm just dies. So we're going to play Shredder. Like I mentioned, if we didn't get the turn 3 and we coined into the turn 4, next turn is going to be Blast Mage, the following turn is going to be Lothab, and the following turn is going to be Unstable Portal unless we draw a 6-drop or like a 2-3s. So he unstable portal. It looks like he's playing a tempo mage, but he just had a really slow start. So he's gonna frost bolt our mana worm. Okay, he's gonna end his turn there. All right. So into technician, into this. Uh, always better to play two cards. In his case, instead of one, also blast mage. It would only hit face, and uh, blast mage is good to kill creatures with because it's a huge tempo play. You're kind of removing his creatures with just an ability and not wasting any cards to do so. Along with that, having a Cogmaster out to be able to make favorable trade versus, like, if he plays a Sorcerer's Apprentice or a Flame Waker, we'll be able to kill it off with the Cogmaster and just ping it for one. Alright, so he got a Gazlo out of his Unstable Portal. He's going to ping, what, face? Oh, he picked the Cogmaster, and he's going to end his turn. Oh, that's kind of pointless of him. Okay, so, do we loathe him or do we Blast Mage? I think we loathe him. I think we Lothab, swing the Cog into the 3-6, swing the 4-4 into the 3-6. It's going to have one health left. If he pings it, then he only has four mana to deal with, and then we swing four directly with our Shredder. So this leaves a situation where on a 6-drop, if he has Emperor, he won't play it because he'll want to kill our 4-1, unless he plays Emperor and he's super fucking greedy. And then he has like an Arcane Missiles in his hand so he can deal with the 4-1 efficiently next turn for free. But then he'd have a Sorcerer's Apprentice making it zero cost anyway in his hand. Okay, so he is going to ping it for 4-1, or for with a, well, two mana for one damage. He's gonna play a Yeti, okay. Okay, so from here we're just going to play, hmm, I think Blast Mage, and then we're gonna make our Lothab invisible. And the reason being is because when we swing with everything, and we make this invisible, even a Flame Strike won't kill the Lothab, and he has no way of dealing with it. Even a Flame Cannon wouldn't even deal with it, and it's pushing lethal. The guy has no taunts unless he unstable portals into a, uh, a, like a, a taunt, which is, I mean, it's likely, but not too likely. Flame Cannon, wow, it did hit the Lothab, but even with that, I guess he could Arcane Missiles. Okay, never mind. If he would have Flame Cannon hit the Lothab and then Arcane Missiles and that would have hit the Lothab, I would have been pretty depressed. <laughs> I mean, we would have still had, like, a huge chance of winning, but, I mean, that's that's pretty impressive, making a character invisible and he still ends up killing it. Normally, you always want to save the invisibility for the Archmage, but for then, we were going to push lethal anyway, as long as we made one card invisible and he wasn't able to kill it. Oh, man, sitting in this position is killing my back, guys. I can't wait till I can get back home and sit in my nice little, I wouldn't even call it nice, but a chair, you know? At least has some back support. Alright, so we're going to get rid of the pile of this guy golem. Keep the... Actually, we're going to get rid of the fireball as well. Keep the one and two drops. Hopefully, we can draw into something like a three drop. Another two drop. So, like I said, mana worm, unstable, com or unstable portal is a good combo to have. And the Anoyotron is nice if we pull out the blast mage. So, mana worm, of course. <sighs> hey, look, he's rank eight. He's above us now. Instead of playing rank nines and rank tens, we're playing a rank eight. This could be disastrous, boys. He is playing Hunter as well, which is pretty good against uh, Mech Mage. 
We're gonna go face here. We could have unstable portaled, but I feel like protecting the mana worm and throwing down the Anoyotron is quite annoying. <laughs> Anoyotron is annoying. Walls. Okay. So this is pretty bad for us. He was able to make it through the Anoyotron in one turn, which leaves us to swing into his probably his mad scientist with our mana worm and play spider tank. Uh, we could coin. No, coin would be pointless. We're just gonna. Hmm. This good base. He's gonna swing his mad scientist into our mana worm no matter what, so he might as well deal the one damage. He has no way to kill the spider tank unless he's gonna want to swing into it with his weapon. But then that like takes away from him having the mad scientist down to pull the secret out to gain the extra charge on his weapon. So he actually is going to go for killing the mana worm with his weapon, not getting the extra charge from the uh, secret that he's gonna get out of it. Okay, so that's kind of greedy. We're gonna swing. Okay, so it is a frozen trap. All right, not too bad. We're gonna throw it on the shredder. Unfortunately, he has the initiative now because. Uh, he can attack and I can't, and he has the ability to play creatures and kind of move around freely. But we do have a Frostbolt Fireball in our hand along with an Unstable Portal that's potentially a free creature. So, hopefully he goes face here. Huh. Alright. He did not go face, and he gets a Loot Hoarder, which allows him to draw another card. Wow. Alright, so I think we... I think we... I think we have to use coin here, so we're gonna like probably frostbolt into this, swing it with our one one coin into a shredder, and then next turn we can loath up. Having that spider tank cost five is pretty bad for us. There's not gonna be a great time to play that until we have literally nothing else to play. It's just gonna be one of those guys. Useless. Okay, so Houndmaster onto. All right, so ideally we want him to attack his uh, spider into our shredder because we were gonna have to make that play next turn anyway. Yeah, so if he would have hit face here, that would have been better on his part, um, but he did, so that's good. And we get a one one out of our shredder. How unfortunate! Even if it was a two attack, that would have been great because then we could ping the four three, but we can't. So. Do we just piloted Sky Golem and kill off a spider? I believe we do. End our turn. So unfortunately, our piloted Sky Golem is really prone to dying to his 4-3, but we don't, really don't have an option here. If I was him, I would just swing for face, because I'm still at 32 health. Oh, wow. So he's going to Iron Beak it, too, off the top, into a Shredder. I do not think we're going to win this game, boys. If we win this game, there's some ser serious comebacks we got going on here. All right, Blast Mage, nice card, but unfortunately uh, we have no mage to mech to combo it with. Oh, wow. So the Keeper for one mana, I like it. It's not too helpful as of now, but it's still a good card to have. I think we... Sp do we Spider Tank and hope he doesn't kill it, or do we Lothab and just the Lothab dies to a Shredder and a one drop? I think we Spider Tank and hopefully he doesn't kill it. Hopefully he just gets really greedy and doesn't kill it. If I was him, I would definitely kill the spider tank because of Blast Mage with his Iron Beak Gal and his Mad Scientist to pull another secret out of his deck. Jesus Christ. We, we're gonna get fucked. We're getting fucked. Alright, so he's gonna... Oh, yes, he's being super greedy right now. Thank you. Thank you for being greedy. Alright, so now Blast Mage value. Actually, do we want to play the Technician first, or do we just Blast Mage Value? We have 8 mana, and there's 3. I think we just Blast Mage Value. See what it hits, and then we'll, we'll, we'll change shit around. Alright, now we Technician. Let's see what we get. And we change this his uh, Savannah High Man to a 3-3, making it pretty useless. And then we're going to swing into his... Scientist. Another... Wow, another freezing trap. Okay. This spider tank's just having a rough day today, guys. This spider tank's like, I just want to attack once, coach. Just let me attack once. I've been frozen trapped twice. <laughs> Archmage would be pretty nice here because of the uh, the invisibility uh, uh, card we have. And then we'll be able to have three fireballs and we'll be able to push lethal. But he's pushing lethal, I'm pretty sure, next turn if he swings for face with everything. But he's probably scared. If he doesn't attack with anything, how much do we have? 9, 12... We have 18 damage, we have 19 damage, which means we would have to draw into the next fireball, and we'd still be one mana short, because it would cost two fireballs and a ping. Yeah, so we could actually swing face with everything here, and we could not push lethal next turn at all, even with two fireballs. So that's 12, no, 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 would we? That'd be, no, definitely not now. 5-4 down to kill command, rip. 
Why is he clearing my field? He could just go... Ooh! This is so good for us. He just got so... Oh my god. We can turn around this game, boys. He just got so... That is so unlucky for him. Because now our 3-4 is going to be able... He should have killed our 3-4. He should have tried to kill our 3-4. Because now our 3-4 can swing into his 3-3. Three, three. It's going to bring out two 2-2s. Two, two, and then we're going to ping his explosive to clearing, clearing his field. And he's going to get one card and another secret if he has it. No secrets left in the deck. We're going to summon the spider tank. Even though Lothab is a bigger card, we're summoning the spider tank because of technician. Which we're going to be able to make a 4-4 next turn. And then we're also going to play Lothab, stopping him from playing Unleash the Hounds the following turn. And then we're going to push lethal. Wow, that explosive sheep. Oh my god, the shredder just fucked him so hard. Oh my god. Alright, so Technician, Lothub, and Snow Chugger. And then we're going to swing into his face. I do not want that web spinner giving him, like, King Crush or anything like that. And if it does give him King Crush, I doubt he's going to swing into a creature with it. He's probably just going to go face and ping face. So Knife Juggler into, hopefully not Unleash the Hounds. Dire Wolf Alpha, okay? Ping's face. Ping's face with Steady Shot, and then probably Swing's face for two. Alright. So how much damage do we have right now? We have 9, 10, 15, 21, 22. Right? If I calculate 10, 15, 21, 22. No? 9, 10, 15, 21, 22. Yeah. It's exact lethal. Well, we want to free... No? Is it lethal? No? Okay. We'll just clear his field. Keep it safe. Play this. Freeze his spider. And then ping for one. And our turn. So we freezed him so he can't draw Eagle Horn. We freezed his spider so he can't attack with that. So unleash the hounds we die to and kill command we die to. I think I messed up my map. I think we did have lethal. Was I saying 22 or 21? I think I fucked up. <laughs> I think I'm retarded. I was saying 22 and thought he had 23 when I should have been saying... I don't know what the fuck I was saying. We won anyway, but I think I fucked up really hard there. I'm sorry, guys. Like, I was saying it right and I was thinking it completely wrong. I'm sure that's happened to people before. It's like you, you say you're going to do something and then you do what you s completely didn't say, but you thought about and it's wrong. I'm so confused in my head right now. We're just going to keep playing. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I confused myself without saying anything. But said the wrong thing. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, so we need one game to hit that sweet rank eight. Uh, we're going against a rogue, so I'm pretty sure we're going to be just fine. We're going to get rid of the pilot. It's Guy Golem. We won't act retarded this game. We won't say things we don't mean. <laughs> and we won't miss lethal, which I'm pretty sure I did. I'm not. I don't even want to. Let's not even think about it. Double Annoyotron, definitely going to be pretty annoying with the Cogmaster coming out first. So we're looking for a 3-drop uh, and a 4-drop. There's a 5-drop. Not exactly what we're looking for, but at least we don't have to worry about it, at least for the first two turns, because we do have an Annoyotron into the Cogmaster, which is a really, really nice opening two-turn start. Uh, you can really only ask for a Mech Warper and like a Snow Chugger better, because he is playing Rogue, so the Snow Chugger definitely helps out a lot. So it looks like he's playing Death Rattle Rogue. Which is not surprising. Very popular deck. There's our three drop, which is really nice. So there's the Annoyotron, and then swing for three. So Death Rattle Rogue runs that new Raptor card. So it's like Death Rattle Raptor Rogue. Death Rattle Raptor Rogue. <laughs> um, so Haunted Creeper, and then we can expect on turn three the Raptor to come out. I think we throw down Spider Tank here, when we swing for face. The only problem with his deck is it doesn't have... I don't think he doesn't... I know he runs Sludge Belchers, but I don't know if they run a anti killbot or not, so they're very prone to being rushed down early on if they don't get the like the cards they need. And it seems like whenever you play Raptor Rogue, they always have that stupid fucking Raptor on turn three. Like no matter what, it's like turn two Nubrin egg, turn three Raptor. And it's like, okay, and then they abuse of Sergeant the egg every time. So I think we sw swing in with the spider, we blast mage, hopefully it kills both those one ones. It does. And we're going to swing for face, and now he's going to have to use his weapon to get through the Annoyotron, and then he can kill our Cogmaster if he really wants to, but that still isn't that great. But if, even if he weapons, he's only going to be able to summon a 2 
um, mana creature. Fan of Knives. Wow, I didn't even think of that. That's pretty bad for us. So now he's going to be able to kill Blast Mage, and he's going to summon two one ones. Ouch. All right, so from here, we can Anoyotron, Spider Tank, and then swing for three. We could have Lothabed, um, but I... Eh. Well, I kind of want to save that for this turn and throw down the 2-1, because we have more creatures on board. So if he's playing, like, he uses, uh, what is it, like, Blade Fury, it doesn't destroy us. So the agent's going to kill a spider tank, and he's going to not... Wow, okay, so he's not going to be... Actually, yeah, because if a weapon hits it, and then the 2-1-1s... Okay, so he's actually going to be able to get past an Oyotron, but he's still going to take one to the face and kill off both of his 1-1s. All right, so from here, then, we're just going to... Oh, wow, the 7, Dr. 7. <laughs> All right, swing for 3 to the face. Not worried about his field too much. We just kind of want to rush him down. We will not win the late game with this guy at all. We just need to win. As soon as soon If he gets past our boom, we lose, unless we draw into, like, a fireball and he has, you know, 7 health. So there's the Sledge Belcher. Ouchies. We, we had mentioned before he does play those in the deck because they do have a decent death rattle for the Raptor to copy. It's also a really hard card. Like I said, they're very prone to rush decks, so... Playing the boom, our last hope, swinging for five. I guess we could draw into another pile to Treader next turn, and that's pretty sticky. So unless he's got, like, a big game hunter or some sort of field clear here, I think we got it in the bag for the most part. Fireball would be a great next card, too. Okay, so it looks like he conceded. Here is rank eight, everybody. Nice, nice, nice. I believe we only lost one in there to that Reno Lock. And Reno Lock is a really tough deck for any sort of aggro deck. So... With all of this said, I appreciate you guys watching. Sorry about playing against that Hunter in the opposite video. We shouldn't have won that game, to be honest, but that retarded Miss Lethal at the end. I was, like, miscalculating shit. I'm sure you guys have... That's happened to you before. But anyway, of course, thanks for stopping by the end, everybody. I'm Warshack, and happy whatever the hell day it is.